my name is Maria Panagiotidi and I'm a research psychologist for a startup company called Arctic Shores and it's based in Manchester. And I'm here as the one, the half of the uh, uh, empathy station. The empathy station um, was supposed to uh, help us collect some data to present at the uh, Alternate Reality Summit, where we talked about how we could potentially use virtual reality to induce empathy. And we wanted to collect some data. The empathy station um, consists of three parts. Um, uh, the first part, we just wanted to make people aware of uh, some biases that they might have, because. Um, it's um, even the most liberal audience, the most liberal person, uh, has certain implicit and conscious associations between concepts. So we wanted to, to measure um, the Sheffield Dogfest attendees um, and conscious beliefs by using a well-validated test from psychology. It's called implicit association test, uh, that you just have to respond to a number of stimuli deciding in which category they belong. So in our case we had an Arab Muslim IAT, um, and we want to see what kind of bias would they have. Would they have a preference for people of uh, Arab Muslim origin or would they prefer people from uh, uh, non-Arab Muslim? And uh, we, we had about 50 people in the first few days taking the test. We had some very interesting reactions by them because as you, as you expect, if you're dealing with a very liberal audience, and uh, if they found out that they, they might have a very strong and conscious bias towards a group like Muslim Arabs, they, they don't feel particularly well about themselves. So we had a few people trying to blame the test or <laughs> reacting in a very negative way. Uh, or others were just asked about, you know, so I have this moderate bias, what do I do about it? Which was a nice transition to the next part of our um, uh, empathy station. The next part was about virtual reality as a potential intervention to see whether could we induce empathy using VR and reduce the bias that people might have. And uh, we, to, to do that, we decided we're going to demonstrate a very, uh, in a very basic way how VR works. We used the rubber hand illusion to do that, which um, people found quite interesting. Those people were gathering to see what is that, because we had a fake plastic arm on the table and which caught people's attention. With the rubber hand illusion, you, uh, by simple manipulation, you get people to feel like the rubber arm is theirs. Uh, it's very unsettling. So the way you do it is you just um, get the participant to hide one of their hands behind a screen and uh, they focus on the rubber hand instead. So it looks like the rubber hand is part of their body. You press um, their real arm and the fake one th exactly the same manner and uh, you ask them to focus on the fake one and after a few minutes, most people start experiencing that the, the fake hand is part of their body. Stop, you stop brushing their own hand and you keep doing it to the fake one. And uh, some people, they keep experiencing the effect for a couple of minutes afterwards. And in our case, we had, again, some very strong reactions from people. So you, you think maybe because I know about it, it's gonna cause the intellectual part of my brain to stop it working. But no, after a couple of minutes, it was my hand and I could have I wanted to try and move it. Doing it yourself is really something quite amazing. I recognised he'd stopped, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you when he'd stopped. It really is powerful. It shows you how virtual reality works and how easy it is to fool the brain. The third part of the Empathy Station uh, was a, a short film that was commissioned by the UN. It's called Clouds Over Sidra. Um, and it's, it's a film that allows you to experience uh, how it is being in a, a refugee camp in Syria through uh, uh, the eyes of a young Syrian girl. It's a very emotional, but very powerful film and we use that as we think it's a really good demonstration of how you can use virtual reality to induce empathy. All of a sudden I was actually there I perhaps should say that when I put on the headset for the first time, I literally didn't know what I was going to watch. I put the headsets on and there I was, and so that made it probably doubly impactful because I was absolutely in this other environment which I very quickly felt I was part of. I think it is just really powerfully done to make you acknowledge in some way what it's like to be in a situation like that. You feel more emotionally involved in what's going on. You've got a sense of uh, 
of context, I think, is the best word for it. And rather than kind of just looking at it as a 2D image on a TV screen, you were in that same environment. Virtual reality by itself cannot induce empathy. The fact that some, pe some people react so strongly at the minute is be mostly because it's a novel technology. So the first time you experience VR, it's even if you watch a very basic video, because it's, it's such a strange experience and different from any other form of uh, technology that we have, um, you might end up feeling empathy or experience a very strong emotion. But part of it is because it's a novel medium. And uh, once the novelty wears off, we realize that it's actually not as easy and we have to focus on the story and the message as well as the medium.